Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so in the previous episode I talked about the flavors of Salesforce identity. Um, so today I'm going to talk about um, the language of identity. So before I jump into that, I just wanted to talk about Salesforce identity users, which is very important. Okay, so think about a scenario, right? So you got a Salesforce org. Okay, so this is a uh, Salesforce org right now who gets what kind of access that actually uh, decided by a governance process which you have in place okay so what I meant by that is for instance uh, you got employees okay and you got customers and partners okay so employees are the one who you trust right the people who come and work for you right and you trust them so you give certain level of access to them right they can access a uh, certain kind of information like confidential information uh, related to your company right so employees get a special uh, you know privilege access just just for the sake of argument let's assume that and then we have a customers and partners who wanted to work with you so that you know you have a common goal uh, so for the common cause right so that a partner and and your company can work together say to sell a product so the partners and your customers might at times need um, access to your Salesforce org or say to experience cloud sites right um, and some of the customers could be a, uh, a potential future customers as well okay and so how do you give access to them and what kind of access these people need it's all decided by a governance process in place right so the governance process will decide right um, so your cut oh, sorry excuse me your partners will have what level of access your customers will have what level of access right um, so usually you know when we talk in terms of you know Salesforce identity your employees normally use you know single sign-on right so for instance you uh, log into your machine and you use uh, your company account say first name the last name at you know domain.com whatever right and you log into your Salesforce page and you might see a single sign-on button right you press that and it will log into your production order or whatever or right and the similar way you know that your customer and partners might want uh, access to your Salesforce org so the easy way to to give them access is using a social signer right they can use uh, say a Facebook login okay or sorry this is F okay and they can use the you know the G Gmail login or Google login right some gives LinkedIn access right so depending upon you know configuration you do right so you know partners and your customers can access your org okay so that's one of the you know uh, thing you can do other thing you can also do is that you can customize your you know uh, your log uh, sorry your login window so that you, when you provide a link to your customer it takes you to uh, your login page so that customer may not aware you're using Salesforce behind the scene right so that's one of the options uh, you can do right so this will give a seamless experience to the customer you know you log into the page and in the login page you you know you specify an option to log in using uh, a Google or Facebook or LinkedIn so that that will uh, connect them to your org okay so that's one of the thing you can do so this is a very important thing for you to understand right because who gets uh, what level of access is very important right you can't give customer uh, privilege access at times because you might have sensitive information uh, which you should not be exposing to your customers or partners, right? So that's why I, that's why I mentioned that you should have a governance process in place, uh, to or a business process in place, which explains uh, to your sysadmins, right, to an architect, right, who gets what access. Okay, in simple nutshell. All right, so that's all good. Now we need to talk about a most important concept that is the language of identity. So, which is very important for you to understand. So, we're going to talk about, um, you know, protocols. And so, the three protocols I want to talk about, uh, one is the, you know, SAML, right? And another one is OAuth, right? This is um, OAuth 2.0. And I, another one is that OpenID Connect, right? 
So I'll explain each one by one, and it's very important you guys to understand this, okay? So let's talk about the sign mode, right? So you might have heard about the concept called, say, single sign, right? So let's say this is a sticky man. Uh, I don't know what kind of man is it. Sticky man, is, this looks like a windmill, but anyways, you know, my drawing sucks, so please don't pick me on my drawing. So, <laughs> all right, uh, sorry, Dr. Ray. So, uh, try to log into uh, the Salesforce org, okay? So the user clicks this uh, single sign on, you know, SSO uh, button on the page, and it takes them right to the Salesforce page, right? Where they can access accounts, contacts, you know, depending upon the rights, right? So this is a single sign on, right? Now, this is where the SAML comes into picture, picture right? SAML, um, in simple terms, security, assertion, market language, right? <clears throat> SAML. Security, assertion, market language, right? It's the protocol that make it happen, right? Your single sign-on behind the scene, okay? Um, so I will talk about SAML in detail um, in a second. So, you know, the Salesforce can actually act as a, uh, you know, identity provider or a Salesforce provider. So I'll explain how the SAML works or SAML assertion, right? So when a user try to access a service, okay, so I'm a user, so let me go to the new page. So this is a, you know, um, I try to make the sticky man, whatever, right? The user try to access a service, okay? So this is service. Um, so now the service provider, so this is a service provider, let's say they try to access, say, a Workday, okay? So this is a Workday, Okay, so they try to access the workday. So, and the workday sends out a request to an identity provider, so which is a Salesforce. Here, the Salesforce is acting as an identity provider. Um, so, by asking, "Hey, someone try to access my, you know, my uh, data. So, do you trust this user? Is it okay that if I allow this user to access my service?" So the identity provider, in simple terms, say, oh, yeah, yeah, I trust this, right? So you know, all these things behind the scene, and that's where the SAML comes in the picture, right? So now you must be wondering, what's the difference between an identity provider and a service provider, right? So basically, if you look at the identity provider, right, we talked here, Salesforce acting as an identity provider. So identity provider is the one authenticating the user, okay? And the service provider is asking for authenticated identity, right? So IP is actually the one authenticating the user, and the service provider is actually authenticating the identity. Okay, that's that's in simple in a nutshell, right? And so, what is assertion, right? You must be wondering. We talked about SAML assertion. What is an assertion here? Assertion is the information that's being sent, right? Assertion usually carry detailed information about user, like you know, like your username, phone number, first name, whatever, right? Um, and so yeah. And now, what is SAML in a nutshell, right? We talked about SAML. You must be wondering, yeah, this guy is talking about SAML. You say, you know, security assertion market language. What the heck is SAML? Anyways, in simple terms, right? SAML is an XML-based protocol, right? You might all know the XML, right? So how it works, so you can say just uh, XML, right? Right, something like this. I hope you recognize the syntax. So XML-based protocol means the package of information being exchanged or written in XML, right? Uh, and it's human readable, right? Mostly. I mean, if you work with XML, you know, it's pretty easy to read. It get clunky at times, get, you know, confusing at times, but it's pretty easy to read. It's not like JSON. JSON is it's pretty easy to read, right? I prefer JSON XML, but since we're talking about SAML, and it's it's an XML-based protocol. So, all right. So, so that's a pretty, uh, in a nutshell, what SAML is all about. Okay, so, um, so if you, if you, Talk about uh, single sign-on, that SAML comes handy there, okay? Now, I want to talk about a very, uh, another protocol, which you have heard about it, you know, OAuth, you know, 2.0. So, usually, if you have done integration, right, say, for instance, uh, Salesforce, right, wants to integrate with, say, SAP, okay? And so, the, normally, they do handshake between two systems using OAuth, 
right? And so that you can see the data on SAP site as if it's the data belonging to, sorry, you can see the data on the Salesforce site as if the data uh, of SAP is a part of uh, Salesforce, okay? And so it's an open protocol, okay? It's used to allow secure data sharing between the application. Okay, that's what I mentioned. You know, two system they do handshake in a secure way. Okay, so so another example I would like to give you might have used the mobile app, right? So Salesforce mobile app. So Salesforce mobile app they can pull the contact from a Salesforce org so that you can view in your uh, app, right? So that is using all behind the scene. Okay. And so that's very simple in a nutshell, right? I've used a lot of auth uh, authentication. If you do, if you have done an API integration using auth, so you would know what I'm talking about, right? So this is important for you to understand, you know, the protocols, you know, and it's pretty safe, okay? Now, I wanted to talk about another one, uh, which is an uh, open ID and um, connect. Okay, now, what is OpenID Connect, right? OpenID Connects, it actually, it's a protocol, right? Which adds an authentication layer on top of all 2.0 to enable secure exchange of user information, okay? So, so OpenID is usually sends identity information from one service to another, right? Um, but the thing is that, um, you know, OpenID, you know, is, like OpenID is more op more commonly used than SAML, right? So for instance, when you talk about uh, social sign-on, that's where the OpenID comes in the picture. Like you might have seen, you know, in Salesforce to the, you know, like this is the username and password. Here do you see, you know, Google login, you know, uh, Facebook login, LinkedIn login. So this, if you try to use this service, right, this is where the OpenID connect comes into picture, you know, behind the scene, right? So, because the thing is that when you use the Facebook or LinkedIn, right, to connect to uh, your um, Salesforce or, or to a customer uh, or to a partner Salesforce or, right, you're not actually creating a new username and password. You're using an existing Facebook username and password. The Facebook maintains the details, right? It's not the Salesforce uh, who maintains these details, right? That's, uh, that's pretty uh, simple. And like I said, you know, Salesforce can act as a, uh, service provider, it can also act as an identity provider, right? So now I'm going to talk about, you know, very simple uh, SAML flow and how it works, right? So that becomes very clear because it's very important for you guys to understand, you know, how the SAML works for single sign-on because you will be configuring SSO in, in, in an org if you wanted to use the Salesforce, right? So to understand SSO, you need to understand the SAML flow, which is very important. Okay, so let's go to this page. Um, all right, so I'm a sticky man, you know, whatever the sticky man, the windmill, whatever you wanted to call, uh, wanted to access, you know, Salesforce, okay? Now, I have this button here on Salesforce called SSO. Now, I press this button, okay? Now, what happens is uh, when I press this button here, Salesforce recognized that, oh, okay, I got an SSO request, right? So there is an SSO request by user, so behind the scene, it generates a SAML, okay? Right? Now, the Salesforce redirects the SAML request back to the browser, right? Now, the browser redirects the SAML request to an external identity provider. So in this case, you can say an Azure, okay? Azure AD. Right, so let's say an Azure AD is acting as an you know identity provider. So SAML, uh, you know, uh, redirects to an Azure AD. So the identity provider, you know, verifies the user identity and package that SAML assertion containing the user authentication. So it actually Azure will tell us that, oh, okay, this is a valid SAML. So I I know this user, you know, simple terms. You know, I know this user is a right user, so you can give access to your service to the user, okay? Now, the identity provider, right, sends the SAML back to the browser, okay? And the browser redirects the assertion back to the Salesforce, okay? And then the Salesforce gets that, you know, assertion and says, oh, okay, 
this is a pretty valid decision so that means I can trust the user all right once the Salesforce verify the decision Salesforce give access to, to me to log in okay so I'll explain this in a very simple way it's very very simple okay so I press this button SSO right someone configure the SSO button so when the SSO uh, single sign-on button get pressed you know Salesforce uh, gets the message that oh okay I got an SSO request let me generate a SAML request now SAML request is in simple terms it sends to your identity provider to say hey I got an SSO request from this guy do you know this guy? Do you trust it? If you if yes, send the session back to me with, a, with saying that I trust it so that I can give access to this guy, right? So Azure looks at it and says, oh, okay, look, I trust it. So send the session back and Salesforce verify the session and let the user in. As simple as that, right? But it does more complicated stuff behind the scene. But just to get, you know, from a user perspective, right? If you wanted to explain this in terms of a layman language, this is how we explain it, right? I can't show you, you know, round, you know, bits and pieces of a code because this is just a theory session for now. But, you know, now, now one thing I wanted to tell you, which confuses a hell lot of people, right? You know, people always think that authentication and authorization means the same. Absolutely not, right? If you say I'm going to authenticate someone, uh, and I'm just going to, uh, uh, sorry for my bad handwriting. All right. So, what does an authorization mean? Right. Authorization in simple terms means what a person can do. Okay. And what is an authentication is about? It means who is that person, right? It's like who is me, and what I can do that comes under authorization. So, so you know, I've seen that. I've asked people in interview. Okay, can you tell me the difference between authentication and authorization? Some say both means the same. Uh, really, it, it's not the case. They're both very different. Um, first of all, both different words and means different, right? One means what a person can do, and other, you know, authentication means who is that person, right? Um, so that's, you know, that's one of the things, right? And so this is um, pretty much uh, I wanted to talk about in terms of the language of identity. So in the next episode, we're gonna, you know, deep dive more into hands-on aspects of. Um, identity right which is very important so like I said I'll be talking uh, theory for you know two lectures which I've already did now I'm gonna move on to the hands-on right so that being said I hope you enjoyed today's uh, lecture and have a great weekend adios bonus notches